Spectators hurt, not confirmed. The wire fence right here on the straightaway was ripped apart. It was very fortunate that a car did not come into the crowd because one of the standards holding up the wire screen has also been broken in half. Right here. You're looking at the remains of one of the most dramatic crashes in the history of the Indianapolis 500. I'm Matt Anderson, curator of transportation at the Henry Ford, and we are here with what remains of Salt Walter's car driven in that race. And really all that's left is the tub where the driver would have sat right here. There's one of the side pods where one of the radiators was located, and then the rear wing. And uh, this crash is still remembered as one of the most dramatic and, and spectacular in the original sense of the word in terms of the, the scale of the crash, watching it. There are several cars and cars. We can't see the numbers, but it's been a bad crash on this car. It happened very early in the race as uh, Walter was coming around to turn. There's still some dispute about what actually happened. Walter always maintained that he was bumped by a car behind him. Others have suggested that he may have initiated the contact, but in any event, he crashed into a car ahead of him driven by Jerry Grant. Walter's car was driven up on one of Grant's wheels, which acted like a catapult and basically sent the Walter car kind of slingshotting through the air. It uh, caught on the catch fence where the audience was. The car spun around. The fuel tanks were ripped open, so it was spewing fuel all over the track, flipped upside down, came down onto the track, and uh, basically burst into flame. And uh, it, tremendously dramatic to look at the film footage of that crash, how intense it was. And uh, to see Walter after that crash, the nose of the car was ripped off. If, if you look at some of the photos, his legs are sticking out of the front of the car. But he did survive, though with severe injuries. He was burned over 40% of his body. His hands were badly injured. In fact, the, the story is that they were very close to amputating both of his hands when the doctors decided to make sort of one last try to save as much as they could. We have this car in our collection is not only a reminder of, of that dark moment in Indy 500 history, but it is a reminder of the importance of safety in racing. Certainly, I think Walter's survival can, can be partly attributed to some of the safety features in this car, things like the roll bar behind him there that protected him in, in the, the flipping of the car. Uh, also, the, the fire-resistant suit that he was wearing certainly helped. Uh, frankly, the fact that so much of the fuel spilled out of his car in the accident helped too, so it, it pretty much burned itself out before it could injure him more severely than it did. But also there were a number of safety changes implemented after Walter's crash to try and prevent that sort of thing from happening again. Fuel tanks were reduced in capacity from 75 gallons to 40 gallons, so basically cut in half. Uh, turbo boost pressure was reduced on the engines and the, the rear wings were also reduced in size from 64 inches to, to 55 inches, which both of those, that and the turbo boost adjustments, were, were meant to kind of slow down the speeds of these cars. They were starting to go very fast. Walter qualified in this car at something over 190 miles an hour. Racing, unfortunately, is one of those things we can always make it safer. We always should work to make it safer, but it, it will never be perfectly safe. There's always inherent risk, and this car is a testament to, to drivers' ability to deal with that risk, and Walter in particular, not only wanting to go back in 1974, one year after this crash, but having the, the determination to, to almost will himself into recovery, working to to learn to walk again. One of his kneecaps was shattered in the accident, learning to use his hands again and, and being strong enough, frankly, to come back in 1974 and race again. So uh, a dark chapter in Indy 500 history, but uh, one that I think we can learn from even today.